Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, continue talking about units in physics. We have completed a series of lectures about base units in the system which is called C, uh, Sistema International or something like this. Uh, I think it's French. Um, in any case, the base um, systems of units we have basically built, explained how they come from uh, certain fundamental constants which exist in the world, like speed of light, for example, in the vacuum. So, I consider these units in C as base, and now the other units in different areas of physics are defined based on them. So we are not related anymore to some physical constants. These are all in the base units. And now, just using the base units, we, for our convenience, um, introduce certain other units, which, is, which are called derived units. And, um, and again, it's for our convenience, because basically we can use the, uh, the base units um, to, to measure everything, whatever we need. It's just for our convenience, we derive certain other and, uh, and other units are called some names, but they're basically completely derived from the base units. Okay, so let's start from something very simple. Um, as you remember, we know that the unit of length is meter in C. Okay. Now, not only length we have to measure. We have to measure, for example, area and volume. Now, it was not among our base units. However, we can derive it using certain formulas or definitions of the new um, entities which we are talking uh, about right now. So let's talk about area. Area is measured somehow um, and uh, we have to introduce the unit of measure of area. Now, what do we do in this case? Well, we start from the formula that area is equal to, let's say, width times length. If, uh, if, if this is something like a rectangle, okay, so this would be our width and this would be our length, lengths. So, what we do usually as measurement of the uh, of the area, we we do one times another. X would be here, and Y would be here. Now, these are two linear dimensions. These are two um, entities which we can measure in already defined unit, which is called meter. Well, which means that the definition of the unit of uh, area might be just a square of one meter by one meter. And depending on how many of these squares fit into any kind of area, and area might not necessarily be square or, or rectangular or anything else, but we know what to do because we can divide, divide it in many different smaller squares and we know if we have this, uh, the area of, the, of one meter by one meter we can always um, uh, consider the fraction of this as the area of any part of it and just put all these here etc. But the unit would be still one meter by one meter which is called meter square and this is abbreviation. Okay, that's it. We have introduced the unit of area, which is square meter, which is a square of one meter length and one meter width, and basically that's it. Now, next one is next one is volume, and obviously, for exactly the same reason, we introduce the unit of volume as a cubic, a cube. every side of it equal to 
one meter. It's called cubic meter. So this is the unit, cubic meter. It's derived because, obviously, because it's using the unit of length. So the unit of length is, is, is used to introduce the unit of area and unit of volume. And obviously we use it in physics wherever it's necessary. All right, let's go on. Okay. Next is a little bit more unusual um, kind of a unit of uh, measurement. Um, I'm talking about angles. So let's talk about plane angles first. So this is an angle, right? Now, how do to, to measure angles in, uh, in C? Well, let's uh, think about this way. If you have a, a circle and you have some angle where the length of this is equal to length of this. So this is the radius and this is the radius. Now, as a unit of measurement of uh, angles in C is this particular angle. Now, it's called radian. So the region, one region, is an angle where the radius of the circle uh, is equal to the length of the arc. This angle, it's used as a central angle because the the uh, the, the uh, vertex of uh, angle uh, coincides with the center of the of the sphere of the, of the circle. So if the length of the arc is also equal to uh, radius. Now, what's unusual about this? Unusual about this because we kind of relate it to linear um, dimension, the, the radius. However, however, in geometry, we, in the course of geometry, which basically is on the same site as, uh, as uh, all these lectures, unisor.com, um, it was proven that if you have any uh, uh, circle of any, ra any radius, that would be exactly the same correspondence. This arc would be equal to these radius. So, on one hand, it looks like our definition includes the linear unit of, uh, of measurement, the, the radius, which is kind of involved in this particular definition. On the other hand, it looks like the unit uh, of the angle doesn't really depend on it. Because for any radius, it will be the same angle which we called the measurement of which we called one radian. So that's why uh, the unit is still called radian. Um, uh, so we, we need to have some kind of a name for this unit, right? So we are using the name radian. However, it's, uh, it's actually called dimensionless, so to speak. Well, um, why? It, well, the reason is very simple. You can say that since this length is equal to the radius, um, we can say that the angle is measured by the ratio of uh, lengths of arc divided by radius. And if length of arc is equal to radius, then this ratio would be equal to one radio. Right? Now, for any other angle, we can say exactly the same thing. So if you have, let's say, this angle, we have this particular length of the arc divided by the radius and we will have some number of radians. And again, it does not depend on the radius because for any radius, ratio of this to this would be exactly the same. Alright? So, 
if this is true, what is the measurement? Well, length is measured in meters, radius is measured in meters, so it looks like meters and meters can cancel each other. So that's why it's called dimensionless. It does not really um, change the dimension of any other uh, physical um, entity which we are talking about. So if the angle is part of the definition of some other thing, then the dimension of angle itself is not really changing the, the, the overall dimension of any physical entity which, which, we, which we are measuring right now. Okay? Okay, so that's plane angle. How about solid angles? Well, solid angles have similar kind of structure. Well, first of all, what is a solid angle? So let me just remind you that solid angle is basically defined uh, uh, as, as part of space which is uh, inside the conical surface. So the conical surface is the surface which basically has uh, the vertex, it has some kind of a closed, uh, closed curve, it might be a circle, it might be a triangle, in which case it will be a different shape. But whatever it is, the conical surface is supposed to be given, and what's inside the conical surface is called a solid angle. And it can be of, uh, of uh, really strange shape, because the conical surface is based on, uh, basically, like if you have a point here, which is moving along this curve, and point here, and connect them. So whatever the surface is formed by movement of this point, and lines which connect this point to a, to, to, to a vertex would be a conical surface. Now, how can we measure it? It's much more, it looks much more complicated than in case of a, um, of a plane angle. Okay, well, the way how to do it is the following. Now, this would be a center of a sphere. So, the conical surface would cut certain piece of a sphere. It's like a cap. So, whatever this would be, it's, it's, it's like a piece of a, um, of a sphere, which is kind of like a cap. I mean, if it's a circular area, that would be kind of a simple thing. It's a simple cap. But in theory, it can be anything. So it's a piece of a surface of a sphere, which conical surface cuts, basically, from, from the sphere. Similarly to, in the plane uh, case, we have an angle. It cuts certain arc, right? So, or angle is supported by this. Uh, or angle corresponds to this arc, whatever it is in the case of a plane. So in case of three dimension, we have exactly the same thing. So this piece of a sphere uh, is cut by a solid angle from, from the surface of the, uh, of, uh, of the sphere. It has certain area. So this area of this cap, or whatever it is, divided by r square would be the measure of the solid angle. And it's called, if this is equal, if this area is equal to r square, then the whole thing is equal to 1, and uh, the name is steradian. Again, 
it all depends on the area of this uh, piece of a sphere which solid angle cuts. Um, now, again, the same thing as in case of a plane angles. It looks like it depends on linear dimension, on the radius of the, of the sphere. But again, if we increase the surface of the screen, increase the radius of the screen, and just continue this solid angle, so every point would be reflected further to a bigger square to a bigger sphere, then the ratio of the new area which is cut from the, from the bigger uh, sphere to the bigger radius would be the same. It's all kind of a scaling, it's called, in, uh, in geometry. And that's why it's also independent, basically, on the radius. It looks like it depends on the radius, but in reality, for any radius, that would be the same. So it's a it's a characteristic of the uh, solid angle. <coughs> and obviously this is called the steregion, um, and uh, uh, that's how we measure the uh, solid angles. No, steregion because it's stereo, you know, it's like a stereo sound or stereo uh, visual effects, etc. Three-dimensional. Okay, what's next? Okay, next is speed. Now, what is speed? Speed is something which we have come up with, basically. It's our own invented by us concept, physical concept. And we can measure it, obviously, by how? Well, we have to define the speed, right, first. Well, we define the speed of uniform movement. You know, the first law of uh, Newton says that in the absence of force, uh, the object would, or point object, would move along a straight line with the constant speed. So, what's the speed? Well, speed is basically a ratio of the lengths or distance uh, divided by time it took for this particular uh, object to cover this distance, right? So, in case of a uniform movement, when the, this particular uh, ratio is constant, then we can just take any piece uh, of uh, the distance, uh, which has been covered during certain amount of time, divide distance by time, and we will have a speed. Now, in case of a speed, uh, uh, is variable. That's much more complicated. Um, so we can actually uh, do this type of measurement during certain infinitesimal time. Uh, when this during this infinitesimal time, we can consider that the speed is actually constant. <coughs> So, um, in this particular case, if we have something like a function which define how much distance we cover um, uh, at the moment t, so we, this is our trajectory, that's how we start, this would be uh, our zero distance, and uh, the length of this would be a function d of t. Right? Distance covered by the moment of time t. Well, so what do we do uh, to determine the speed at any particular point? We have to go to an increment, infinitesimal increment of delta t. So the time would be time plus delta t. We have to take how much distance was covered during this time. So let me just change it to letter x because d is the differential and that's kind of a <coughs> so our distance would be x. So we have a moment we have a position at moment uh, uh, t plus infinitesimal uh, piece of time. We subtract the position which was at the time t and that's the length 
covered during this uh, time of delta t, and we divide by delta t, and that would be our average speed on this very, very small uh, piece of uh, our trajectory. And whenever we have a delta t going to zero, we will have a limit of this. With this condition, we will have exactly the point uh, the speed at this particular point, okay? So, this is uh, a speed, and how do we measure the speed? Well, since it's a ratio of the length which, have, which we have covered by time, so the unit would be meter by second. There is no special name for meter by second. So we are just using meter by second without assigning it any kind of special name, as in some other cases, whenever we have a derived um, unit of measurement. Okay, next is acceleration. And acceleration is basically measure of change of the speed. So speed is the measure of changing the distance. Acceleration is measure of changing the speed. And we do exactly the same thing. We have a speed at moment t. And how to determine what's the change, rate of change? Well, we have to have speed of next infinitesimal um, time, uh, uh, time moment. We have the difference in speed during this moment in time divided by delta t, divided by time. And that's the rate uh, of change of speed, and that's called acceleration. Now, to, 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 to do it properly at point t, we have to have the limit of this as delta t goes to zero, which doesn't really change the dimension, because if speed is meter by second, then this would be meter by second by second. And there is an abbreviation meter divided by second square, basically to um, shorten this type of abbreviation. So this would be, again, without any special name, it's called meter by second square, if you wish. Um, that's, an, uh, that, that, that's how we measure acceleration at any point. Next. Next would be the force. Well, the force would be based on uh, the second law of Newton. So, we, have, we, we do remember second law, and since the force is defined by this, we can have that the unit of force would be when measure uh, mass would be equal to one kilogram, then acceleration would be equal to uh, one meter per second square, and their product would be one kilogram times meter divided by second square. I usually do it second, but in C, really, it's just letter S. So this would be appropriate unit for force. So the um, uh, the, 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 the unit of force would be such a force which will give this product, this measured in kilograms and this measured in met, met meters by, by, by second square, um, if the value of this would be equal to 1, that would be a 1 unit of force. And it's called Newton, obviously, in honor of Isaac Newton. Uh, the abbreviation in this case the exists. It's a capital letter N. You see, for acceleration and for speed, we did not have any special uh, abbreviation. Just use meter by second and meter by second square. In case of this, we do have different abbreviations. So kilogram times meter divided by second square is called a newton. Okay. Now, we built everything hierarchically. First, the fundamental, the base units, and then something which is derived, like, for instance, speed, acceleration, and then we derive from derive. It's like 
the whole math is basically built on axiom and then theorems and then theorems based on theorems, etc., etc. So now, based on whatever we have done before, we will use uh, uh, whatever we have done before to define new um, physical units. So the next one is pressure. Now, what's a pressure? Well, pressure is whenever you are, for example, whenever I'm standing, I'm standing on certain area of the floor, and obviously I'm pressing, um, and I would like to know uh, how much force is concentrated on each unit of of area. Well, unit of area is square meter. We have already counted, and my force, my force in this case is, is a gravitation force because I'm, da I'm I'm pressing the floor because of gravity. So my force or my weight actually that's my force, the source of my uh, uh, of my force is measured in newtons because that's how force is measured. Now, if we divide my weight by the area on which I'm covered, on, on which I'm standing, the area basically of my feet, so to speak. And this is my weight, this is the area of my feet. Then I will get the pressure. And the unit of pressure is this. If it's equal to 1, it's called 1 Pascal. Again, in honor of Blaise Pascal, famous uh, scientist, it's PA. Well, and the last one which I wanted to cover today is density. Density is amount of mass per unit of volume. So this is kilogram per meter cube. And that's it. So again, there is no specific unit for this. So these are units which are used in mechanics. Now, the next lecture would be units which are used in, let's say, energy or something else. And we will continue basically building all these new units, so to speak, based on the previous ones. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.